unbowed, unbent, unbroken. The words of House Martel, a promise to our enemies and a challenge to our lovers. Thousands of years ago, the warrior queen Nymeria crossed into Dorne from Essos, fleeing the dragon lords of Validia. After she landed, she burned her ships, all 10,000 of them, so no cowards could slink home. What a woman. Dornish in spirit before she ever was in flesh. She was lucky to land in Dorne, where powerful women are not locked away in seps and the beds of old men. My ancestor, Mors Martel, saw her and desired her, and proved that where armies fail, a tongue may succeed. Wedding his strength to hers, his spear to her son, they subdued all his rivals together. After the tradition of her people, House Martel then ruled Dorne as princes, not kings. Twice, the Targaryens tried to conquer Dorne with soldiers. Twice, they failed. Only when the Dragon Kings came bearing husbands and wives did my ancestors relent and agree to join their seven kingdoms. House Martel could have waged war until the end of days. But how could we resist a peace we could take to bed? Eventually, after centuries of courtship, House Martel got into bed with the Targaryens. We took King Daeron II and his sister for our own before they could take each other, and six kingdoms became seven. Even now, I do not blame my ancestors. One look at those long, silver locks. It is not every day a man gets to ride a dragon. But they soon learned that you can't leap off a dragon at will. My sister Elia, she married Prince Rhaegar Targaryen and became the princess she already was. In Dorne, she walked among vipers and none would bite her. In King's Landing, she found herself surrounded by lions. When Robert Baratheon rebelled against his rightful king, his future father-in-law, Tywin Lannister, ordered his beast, Gregor Clegane, to murder my sister, along with her helpless children. And men called the Lannisters heroes. After the submission of House Stark, Aegon marched towards Old Town, steeling himself for another battle. But he found the gates open, with the High Septon welcoming him. The pious fool even had the arrogance to grant what Aegon had already won, and anointed the last Valyrian as Aegon of House Targaryen, first of his name, King of the Andals and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, and Protector of the Realm. But while Aegon titled himself Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, in reality he held only six. The seventh, Dawn, had never knelt. Visenya had flown into the Vale and returned with its crown. Mimicking her sister, Rhaenys had flown over the enemy force holding the passes into Dawn and landed in the castle of its ruling lady, Princess Maria of House Martell. Maria was 80 years old, fat, bald, and blind. Behind her back, many sniggered at her as the yellow toad of Dawn. The beautiful Rhaenys probably thought as much when they met. She demanded Princess Maria kneel to her brother Aegon, though she allowed that on account of Maria's age and health a simple vow of submission would do. But the princess told the queen that the Targaryens weren't wanted in Dawn, and no Martel would ever bow, bend, or break no matter how badly they burned. Renice could have mounted her dragon right then and roasted Maria in the castle as her brother had done at Harrenhal, but whatever she saw in Maria's eyes, scared her right back to King's Landing, with a dragon's tail between its legs. After Aegon's coronation, Rhaenys returned to Dawn with Aegon and Visenya, and their dragons. But no armies met them in the field, and no lords defied them in their castles. As the dragons approached, Dawn simply emptied. House Martell had learned from Harrenhal and the Field of Fire. The dragons were unbeatable in battle, but wars were more than battles. Unopposed, Aegon claimed Dawn for his own, but as soon as he returned to King's Landing, his castles were hurled off towers and his royal garrison vanished in the desert, never to be seen again. Except perhaps when the winds change and the sands cough up old bones and armor. Renice returned on Meraxes, intent on revenging herself against Maria Martel, 
But Dawn was no longer empty. The Dornish kept Mary as promise and fought even while burning under dragon flame. And they won. One day a bolt pierced the eye of Meraxis and knocked the dragon out of the sky. House Martell remained unbroken. Unlike the unfortunate Rainers, in their wrath, Aegon and Visenya set flame to every castle and city but Sunspear, trying to turn the people against House Martell. But the Dornish stayed loyal, and when Aegon returned to King's Landing, he found assassins waiting for him in the streets of his own capital. If not for Visenya, the Conqueror would not have enjoyed his conquest for very long. From then on, the king and his family would be guarded by the seven greatest knights in the realm, the King's Guard. When Maria died in her sleep, her weak and tired son sued for peace. But old Maria had exhausted Aegon as well, and he granted the request. The Targaryens still wanted Dawn, and eventually they would have it, but not at the point of a sword. They would buy it the same way great lords buy anything, with a daughter. Before the Seven Kingdoms, before the Iron Throne, there was Dorn. Twelve thousand years ago, the first men crossed the land bridge from Essos to here. Of course, they were men, so they soon broke it. Then, while their cousins to the north built kingdoms, the Dornish squabbled over land, water, and wives for centuries. Until Nymeria, a warrior princess in Essos, she led a fleet of 10,000 ships across the narrow sea to Dorn. Almost all of the petty lords made it clear that she wasn't welcome. All but one, Morse of House Martell. He saw in her a strength to match any man, including his rivals. After she accepted his marriage offer, she set fire to her ships. For 50 leagues, the coast was bright as day, and in the burning light, Princess Nymeria, named Morse Martell, the Prince of Dorn, in the style of her people. Dorn would be her home, or her grave. For many years, Nymeria and Morse waged war against all rivals. The Jordanes, Blackmonts, Corgiles, and even the mighty House Ironwood. They sent no fewer than six self-styled kings to the wall in golden chains. After Morse fell in battle, Nymeria took command of his armies and united Dorne. In two years, she ruled for 27 more, and though she married again, those husbands were little more than counselors and consorts. Dorn was Nymeria, and Nymeria was Dorn. She survived a dozen attempts on her life, put down two rebellions, and threw back two invasions. And when at last she died, her eldest child succeeded her, her daughter not her son. And Dorn followed her because Nymeria had proven that women were equal to men, if not better. Centuries later, Aegon Targaryen sought to unite Westeros as Nymeria had Dorn. The other six kingdoms fell quickly before his dragons and ambition. When his sister wife, Rhaenys, flew her dragon south and demanded our surrender as well, Princess Meria Martell warned, I will not fight you nor will I kneel to you. Dorne has no king. Tell your brother that. Rhaenys threatened that the next time the Targaryens would come with fire and blood. Meria replied, You may burn us, my lady, but you will not bend us, break us, or make us bow. This is Dorne. You are not wanted here. Return at your peril. Rhaenys did, and she died. Her dragon died. All her soldiers died. Eventually, her brother, the Conqueror, conceded that what Nymeria had done, he could not undo. Generations later, another foolish Targaryen invaded Dorne. He died as well. Eventually, we did join the Seven Kingdoms, but when we wanted, and on our terms. If dragons could not conquer us, why should we fear lions? Unbowed, unbent, unbroken. The words of House Martell. The words of Dorn. Men may forget, but...
but women always remember. When we were divided, Nymeria united us. When we were invaded, Meria defended us. 